Uh, first question, is caffeine in moderation a bad thing? The answer is no. But caffeine can become a problem if you abuse it and you don't understand how to use it as a tool. Let's be honest, caffeine is a stimulant, much like any other, but unlike other stimulants such as cold water, fresh air, TV, conversation, etc., you don't have the ability to shut this off once you turn it on. All right, so does caffeine give you energy? No, it really doesn't. In fact, it gives you a false sense of energy by triggering your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight or your stress response. Caffeine in itself is not that terrible in moderation. Now, what's worse than caffeine is the false sense of energy that you get from caffeine. And here's why. Let's take Rachel, for instance. This was a client that I was working with for a period of time way back when to help kind of eliminate her caffeine addiction. Now, in Rachel's specific instance, when she woke up in the morning, the very first thing she would do is pour herself a tall cup of coffee, and this was to wake herself up. Now, because caffeine is an appetite suppressant, which means that it kills your food hunger, she would actually find herself skipping breakfast. Now, the reason why this is bad is because all of our primary energy needs come from carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are converted into glucose, which is the energy source for every cell in your body. So if she isn't eating breakfast to replenish her glycogen stores, which will most likely be depleted around 8 a.m., her body is gonna be lacking the glucose for cellular activity, and it's gonna go into starvation mode. The thing is, she won't be able to feel this happening because the caffeine blocks adenosine receptors, which trigger drowsiness. Drowsiness is a natural response to tell you that you need to eat or you need to sleep. So if you're not fulfilling the needs of your body because you can't actually sense the needs of your body, over time, your body's just gonna break down. Now, when she feels energized from caffeine, she's going to be using her body. Like I said, every action requires glucose. So if she's using her body, and her glucose stores are empty, she's going to be almost creating energy out of thin air. This is why when we drink caffeine and we're skipping meals, after the high wears off, we find ourselves having a huge crash, then craving more caffeine. This can oftentimes become a pretty vicious cycle. You drink caffeine, it suppresses your appetite, you're skipping meals so you're not getting the actual energy that you need. You crash, your first impulse is to go get more caffeine. So once again, you haven't come full circle to the, to the realization that you need to eat food. Another thing, caffeine is also responsible for overactive neurons. When a neuron becomes chronically overactive, it starts to burn off that myelin sheath or that fat layer that surrounds the neuron for protection. When this happens, the neurons become super unstable and sporadic. It's almost like the myelin sheath allows your neurons to have a speed limit. What happens when you're driving at 150 miles an hour? It becomes unstable, right? And you can crash. Same instance with the neuron. If your neurons are unstable, there's no speed control. So there's no balance between the neurons. So in a nutshell, if you abuse caffeine on a daily basis, you're going to destroy your nervous system, especially if you aren't on a good, sound nutritional plan. So if you find that you aren't able to get through the day without caffeine, try to focus on the things that you may not be doing for your body. So this means that maybe you're not getting enough sleep. Maybe you're not eating enough. Maybe you're not getting enough water. Maybe you're not getting enough sun. Maybe you're not getting enough activity. Maybe you're not, maybe you're not doing enough things that you enjoy. Maybe your life is just full of stress. Those are the things that need to be focused on. And in the end, you're gonna be a much healthier you.